Is your PC a space heater? Strictly speaking, no. Dictionary.com defines a space heater as a heater used to warm the air in an enclosed area such as a room or office. A computer, while it may be in a room or an office and even warming the air through convection by means of heat produced from different computer components, it isn't typically used for heating the space. A computer is a programmable electronic device designed to accept data, perform prescribed mathematical and logical operations at high speed, and display the results of these operations. In the case of myself and most of you, that means frames. Most people don't typically use a computer for heating. It simply happens to be a side effect of its usage, whether it's wanted or not. But that's strictly speaking. Computers are not space heaters, but I'm here to argue that computers are technically space heaters, if not literally. In 1879, Thomas Edison invented the electric light bulb, which led to the invention of the first portable electric heating system made from elongated glass bulbs. In 1905, Albert Marsh discovered chromal, which was 300 times stronger than other heating elements at the time and could be used as a safe heating element. Some consider this to be the true birth of the space heater. However, I like to believe that there is a watershed moment that has passed by the space heater community without notice. It was October of 2001. I was just an 11 year old boy who hadn't even applied a single bead of thermal paste yet. I was more concerned with frosted tips and sweet jumps. None be known to most of the world, titanium was used in the genesis of a new space heater. A small one perhaps playing second fiddle to its dual GPU brothers, but a space heater no less. It took some 20 years until it was ready to be the heart of the modern day space heater PC. One that was not only good at pumping out the frames, but also warming your home. Jensen Wong was even able to use its brother as a heat source in his oven. In this very computer behind me sits one of these space heaters a 3080 Ti. So jokes aside, I want to find out if my argument is correct. And while the GPU is likely the biggest culprit of heat production in a gaming PC such as this, all of the components will produce heat to some degree. So to figure out if it truly is a space heater, I ran some practical tests. Simple enough, I wanted to see just how much the heat from my PC was affecting the room temperature. So I use this room here. It's about 75 square feet with the door and windows closed and began each test with an ambient room temperature of 23.9 degrees Celsius. I'm so sorry it wasn't 24. It's just the way it happened. So the first, a control 45 minutes with the computer off. The only thing that should be actively producing heat in the room in any meaningful way are the router and lamp. The router, which I read at 41 degrees on the top surface, in the lamp, I was able to find temps as high as 45 degrees. It's an LED bulb though, so it shouldn't put off too much heat. The second test, computer at light load, I put one of Tim Rogers' videos on and left it running for 45 minutes. The third, gaming, 45 minutes of Forza Horizon 5 on extreme. The results, as the clock ticks, the temps rise in all three tests with a light load pulling above the control and the gaming test pulling ahead of the light load. Above the starting ambient temperature, the PC off test gained 1.3 degrees, light load about doubled to 2.5 degrees, and gaming doubling again with 4.9 degrees gained. So a difference of 3.7 degrees between the control and the gaming test. It's not an insane difference, but the room certainly did heat up, and with more time that difference would have been exaggerated. This was just a 45 minute test. In fact, the warmest temp I read just before an hour had passed during the gaming test was 29.4 degrees. It's not a particularly comfortable temperature to sit in. It was actually hot enough to get the GoPro to crash, which by the way, was also the third thing in the room, creating heat during the test. All of that is good and well. Yes, the PC is obviously a heater of spaces, but is it a space heater? How does it actually stack up against an actual, honest to God, purpose-built space heater? So, I have this space heater. It's a run-of-the-mill ceramic space heater, and many are like it, but this one is mine. Actually, most are like it. Check out Technology Connection's video about space heaters. He reveals that the vast majority of space heaters are very much like this one, no matter what the box tries to convince you. So basically, I want to see if my computer setup can match the heating power of this guy so that there is no question of its space heater status. So that's the bout. Space heater versus space heater. And with any good matchup comes the weigh-in. We aren't talking LBs or KGs for this one. We're using watts. Why? Because watts equals heat. So for the weigh-in, let's start with the actual purpose-built space heater. It's rated at 1500 watts with a recommended heating capacity of 100 square feet. My whole setup isn't going to pull that much power, but setting the heater on low, I found that it would pull a steady 750-ish watts, giving us a decent target. My computer alone can use a steady 580-ish watts at the wall, with the bulk of that coming from the 3080 Ti, which uses nearly 390 watts from the wall at peak. 
including the monitor and speaker, we get a pretty steady 650 watts from the wall while playing Cyberpunk on Ultra. And that leaves us with 100 watts to make up. And if I had a 3090 Ti, we'd be in business. It'd be just perfect, basically. However, I had to take some, well, let's just say a different approach. And there's something that was missing from those first three tests that would usually be appropriate in that environment. And you can see it in this room right now. You might have even noticed it when I took that thermal shot of the GoPro. To me. It's theorized that some humans can output the equivalent of over 2,000 watts of energy in short bursts. That's a lot of heat. And in Sweden, the Stockholm Central Station actually harvests some of that heat via heat exchangers to convert commuter body heat into hot water. Perhaps one day we'll be able to use some of our own energy to power our PCs. Granted, they're gonna have to become a bit more efficient. Bruh. So for now, I will use my body heat to try and shore up some of that missing 100 watts, which happens to be about what a human produces at rest. So I will be in this room during the PC test, which theoretically brings us to a total of 750 watts. For reference, the router, lamp, and GoPro pull a combined total of just under 30 watts. So it's really not that much at all. That's of course in both tests. So test one, about one hour with the space heater pulling 750 watts alone in this room. And I put it on the desk where my computer would normally be. And I know it makes no sense to use a space heater in a room with nobody in it, but this is, this is for, just for fun, right? Just give me a break at least. Test two is me sitting in this room playing cyberpunk for about an hour. And right away we see the temperatures begin to rise in both tests, although the temperature slowly pulls away in the cyberpunk test with the final temperature reaching 4.1 degrees above the starting temp in the space heater test and 5.1 in the cyberpunk test, exactly one degree apart. So there you have it. I know it wasn't precise with me being in the room, but perhaps the wonderful world that cyberpunk 2077 offers just got my blood pumping and had me producing more than the equivalent of 100 watts. But either way, I hope that this is sufficient proof that a PC is actually a space heater. It may not be as much of a space heater as a space heater in terms of its intended function and the maximum heat output, but a space heater, it is. Turning it on to heat a room is no less efficient than using a traditional space heater because ultimately energy used equals heat. And as it turns out, more than 99% of electricity that enters your computer some way or another turns into heat, as it does with most electrical devices. The more power your PC draws, the more heat it will output. I've had disagreements about this with people. They say that their new GPU actually runs cooler or as cool as previous generations. While that may be true, you can't beat the laws of conservation of energy. New cards are consuming much more wattage and that heat has to go somewhere. There's a reason the size of GPU coolers have gotten bigger and it wasn't for aesthetic reasons. Now, what can be done when you don't want that heat? Not much, open a window, don't sit in the room with, with Cyberpunk playing, both the windows and doors closed. It's, it's not very comfortable, but seriously, undervolting will help a little bit. I've got some videos about that. You can even see in these thermal shots that it makes a difference, but ultimately your best bet is not to buy a stupidly power hungry GPU like I did. This thing just pumps it out. You can even see the heat it leaves on the wall. And that goes especially for any of the new 4000 series GPUs from Nvidia or RDNA 3 lineup from AMD. If a 4090 Ti does show up with a TDP of 800 watts, be prepared to leave your PC in another room. That GPU alone will be able to pump out more heat than that space heater on low, just the GPU. Honestly, I, I can't wait to see. I, I hope it comes out like that because I can't wait to see the size of that GPU. It's gonna be ridiculous. But better yet, if, if heat is something you are worried about because you live somewhere without AC or whatever, it doesn't matter the reason, you can plan accordingly and find more efficient parts while building your new machine. Lower tier GPUs and CPUs generally pull less power and higher efficiency PSUs can help a little bit as well. More on the PSUs in upcoming videos. So in conclusion, if there's anything you're gonna take away from this video, it's this. Space heater, space heater, space heater, space heater. Space Heater. This has been Tech Literate. My name is Nick. Thank you for watching. We're in business, baby. We're in business. We're in business. The mic is in the shot, you dim. You dim win. The mic is in the shot. You're gonna roast it again if you leave it in the shot. System made for me long get it. Is the talk the talk ticks. Light bulb, which led to the invention of the first portable electric.